Uh, Kevin, why don't you go ahead? Kevin Liberti, you work as a planner for the city of Hood River. Valerie? Hi, I'm Valerie Egan. Uh, I'm the regional transit coordinator with ODOT for region one. And so I'm just here, um, not as part of the advisory committee, but to answer any questions that you may have throughout this process. And Taylor? Hi, I'm Taylor England, and I'm a service coordinator over at the Detman House. And then Lexi? Hi, all Lexi Stickle. I am with Pacific Source and the Columbia Gorge CCO. Wonderful. Awesome. Okay. So uh, for the SDIF Advisory Committee, um, the, we have recently updated our bylaws. I included those updated bylaws in your meeting materials. Uh, the, the main changes that I made, uh, they were mostly just kind of paring down some of the language. We kind of had some extra language and extra uh, things in there that didn't necessarily need to be in there. Um, and then also tried to trim up some of the language so it was a little bit more understandable as to what the responsibility of the committee was. Uh, did anybody have questions on those bylaws? Amy, this is Kevin. No questions right off the bat. Um, if, if you had a track changes version, maybe uh, would have a couple, but uh, I didn't see any, nothing jumped out at me. Thank you. Okay. Yes, that is a good point. I should have um, included that. Um, the other main big thing too to know is that so, and this was kind of relevant the last time we went through this process, but it just become form, became formalized. Uh, the SDIF advisory committee uh, used to be technically two committees. So SDIF stands for Statewide Transportation Improvement Fund. Uh, it used to be uh, STF and STIF, and I am forgetting for the life of me what the STF stands for. I think it was, uh, Valerie? Um, it's the Special Transportation Fund intended for elderly and disabled transportation for transit services. Thank you. So what they did, uh, ODOT did, is they combined those two funds, and now it's just the SDIF uh, fund. But the intent is still to ensure that uh, these funds go towards uh, folks who are low-income individuals, individuals with disabilities, seniors, and limited English proficiency individuals as well. Um, so it is the, and so that was reflected in the bylaws and that was a big piece of updating the bylaws. So the, the main reason for this committee is to ensure that these funds that we are receiving do impact those different demographics um, but also to, to help um, staff and then recommend, make recommendations to the board on uh, different services that we provide that are funded through um, the uh, Statewide Transportation Improvement Fund um, to ensure that we are really hitting the community needs. So that is the intent. Um, the five main tasks of this committee is to, so again, advise staff on population-based formula funds. So that's the, the SDIF funds. Uh, participate in coordinated transportation plan, which happens about every three years. Uh, the last one we did was two years ago. So we will be doing another one in a year or so. Uh, and then currently we are also working on the transit master plan, as you all are aware, as you're um, all involved with that. Uh, and that is expected to be completed by June uh, 2023, June 30th, 2023. Uh, that unfortunately, we cannot take any of the information learned from that plan into account for this SIF plan uh, that's coming up. So for the biennium of 23 through 25, which starts July 1st, 2023, and goes until June 30th, uh, 2025. Um, so when we're looking later at the different tasks, we do have to keep in mind primarily uh, the objectives that have been identified in the coordinated trans 
transportation plan update in 2020, as well as the 2017 uh, transit master plan. So just something to be aware of. Uh, also review and prioritize uh, STIF discretionary and statewide transit network applications. So under the STIF plan umbrella, or sorry, the STIF funding umbrella, there's the formula funds, which we just automatically receive um, each quarter uh, for the programs or projects that this committee approves or recommends for the board to approve, uh, as well as discretionary funds, uh, which can be used for a variety of different projects. Uh, we are gonna be applying for one that uh, updates technology systems that we use, and we'll talk about a little more of that a little later. Um, and then also the statewide transit network uh, as well. And that's how we fund our Columbia Gorge Express service. Uh, so those are both discretionary and statewide transit network uh, grants are uh, competitive grants, whereas the formula grants are not. Um, we just have to make sure that we're using those money appropriately and based on plans and community or as identified in plans for community needs. Um, so again, review and prioritize uh, stiff formula fund projects and allocated funding proposal, and then also ensure fund recipients are using funds as intended. We do not currently have any other recipients besides ourselves. There are other qualified entities in the state that um, actually have subrecipients, um, but it's a task so that if we were ever to have a subrecipient, you would to make sure that they would be using the, the funds appropriately. Um, okay, so with that, we're gonna go ahead and move on, unless there's any questions, we're gonna move on to the fourth agenda item. Um, and since we don't have a quorum, I'm not gonna ask you to confirm the, um, the funding prioritization of the projects, but I was just gonna go over them real quickly and give you an opportunity to ask me if you have any questions. Okay, and all of these, uh, oops, I'm sorry, I, I messed up, I jumped ahead. We're on agenda item three, which is reviewing the fiscal year 22 SDIS report. So that was uh, included in your materials as well, but I'm just gonna give you a super high level uh, overview of what we've done uh, during fiscal year 2022. So the project one low income fare program, so it's ongoing. Uh, we provide free passes to low income individuals through Gorge Transit Connect program. Uh, so through local partners. So that includes the Columbia uh, Bridges to Health. Uh, it also includes Hood River County uh, Health District, One Community Health, The Next Door, uh, Providence, uh, uh, Taylor's organization at Devon House also receives uh, passes through that program. And their goal is to uh, get those into the hands of the clients who need them, who meet the income eligibility requirements, but also to help those individuals understand how to use transit within the gorge. And it's, a, uh, it's shown to be highly, uh, uh, highly successful. Uh, with regards to getting passes to people and then ensuring people know how to use them. Uh, this also provides free passes to River Valley High School, um, well, Hood River Valley School District middle and high school students. Uh, this program, every year that we've done it, we started in 2022, or sorry, 2020, and every year that we've done it, we've gotten progressively better. Uh, I think there is still definitely some room for improvement of just ensuring that those students know that they have passes and how to use it. Uh, and I think a large amount of that is us just working with the school district and the, the high school and the middle schools uh, to do that outreach and education directly to the students that is needed. Um, and we also provide discount for uh, community ID holders through this program or they pay for that this program pays for that uh, discount. Any questions on project one? Okay. 
All right, so uh, project number two, targeted service to low-income individuals. Uh, this uh, has helped fund uh, the Cascade Locks deviated fixed route. Uh, so that uh, stops at actual uh, fixed route stops, but also has the ability to deviate to clients who need custom pickups and drop-offs and can't necessarily travel to a fixed route spot. Uh, this also helps fund um, some of our, uh, uh, the, the services to some of the City of Hood River folks as well. Um, yeah. Great. Um, an outreach to vulnerable populations for project three. Uh, so again, this is ongoing. Um, it's helped us uh, expand our efforts to reach Spanish speaking populations, uh, continued work with the school district, meaning um, working to do the outreach that is needed for uh, folks to understand the services. Again, there's lots of opportunity and I think every year we learn something new. Um, and then it, it helps with our, the outreach uh, that we do through the Gorge Transit Connect program too. Any questions on this one? Yeah. And just one thing to note too, uh, Kevin, so the, the city of Hood River also contributes to the Gorge Transit Connect program. Uh, this is, we just have several ways that we do fund the um, Gorge Transit Connect program. So just wanted to highlight that as well. Thanks, Amy. And the Columbia Gorge Health Council too helped us kick off that program in the first place. Okay, so project four is maintaining existing services. Uh, so this just allows us to um, uh, fund our, you know, Hood River City Route, Hood River Connect, um, we used some of this for our Gorge to Mountain Express service last year. Uh, it, it allows us to, to keep our existing services on the road, which has been incredibly useful, especially recently uh, when we've had to um, uh, see an increase in prices and salaries and everything due to inflation and uh, labor shortages, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and but one thing to know that our ridership um, is at pre pandemic levels or above. So I think that's a really good thing to note and a, a win. Uh, okay, so capital or project five capital expansion and replacement program. Uh, so this was intended match for vehicles uh, that have not yet been received. Uh, so it's match for um, uh, other grants that we, we use to purchase the vehicles. Uh, and because we still do not expect the majority of these vehicles to be received, we will receive one um, by the end of this current biennium. And uh, we will be rolling over about $22,000 to the next biennium, which is the 23-25 biennium. Right, any questions? Okay. And then project six, um, this is our ADA access improvements. Uh, the intent of this project was to uh, ensure that uh, we could make ADA improvements uh, in adjacent or close to uh, bus stops in order to help ensure that people with mobility challenges can get to bus stops. Uh, this has been a little bit of a slower project than I was kind of hoping. Uh, we will be updating our uh, bus stop in front of the CAT office, and that will be using about $8,000, but the rest will be rolled over to the next biennium. Um, and Kevin, this is one that I was hoping, um, we working with Rich over at the study, uh, but my hope is to, to help you, or to use some of these funds for uh, potentially the mobility hub that's over by the aquatic center or some, maybe some other projects as well. Okay, great. Um, I haven't spoken with Rich about that mobility hub. I was wondering if um, you have heard anything from St. Mary's Church. Not recently. Um, I did know that they were very much interested in the, the stop, but I believe if I'm remembering correctly, 
um, is that they have to wait on some funding there about a year or two out. And then we can also use some of these funds to help with that stop as well. Okay. So these, these funds can be rolled forward and okay, great. Thank you. Yep. They just have to be rolled forward into the same project. So they can't, their intent can't be changed at all. Um, it just needs to be fully rolled over in the same project, but we can roll it over. Okay. Um, with respect to the work you've been doing with Rich, is there anything that I can do to assist? I don't think so. I think, uh, so we have finally become uh, staff, I think, to appropriate levels here. Uh, so we're going to have the ability to have a little bit more dedication to uh, getting these bus stops completed and formalizing the bus stops around town. Um, I also, though, wanted to make sure that we weren't kind of jumping the gun on some of the, the buses because they could, or the bus stops because they could be um, uh, impacted by this, the transit master plan update. So that's why some of them were, were kind of waiting on because I, I don't want to obviously um, redo work or uh, start a public process when we, if we change our minds on something. So I really want to make sure we're, we're really um, uh, feel comfortable with moving forward before we move forward with some of the bus stops. I know they're going to be contentious. Understood. Thank you. Yeah, uh, but thank you for the offer. But I'm hoping in the next probably six months, we will make a, a large amount of progress on those bus stops. Okay, um, so the next one is the discretionary and statewide network funding projects. Again, uh, because we don't have quorum, don't wanna prioritize them but I will give just a, a brief overview of them. Um, and so the, the first one that the staff is giving a priority recommendation of one uh, is the Columbia Gorge Express. So this is the current Columbia Gorge Express service that we have. The only difference is it will no longer include the DALs. Uh, the DALs is actually gonna be covered by McKed. They are submitting an application as well um, for uh, sur inner city service between the Dalles and Hood River, uh, which I think it makes sense because the, for the most part, um, that service is within Wasco County, um, but we're still gonna make sure there's a lot of coordination between the two services. Um, all right. And then the, the second project, which is a statewide or a discretionary project, um, as the intelligent information systems. Um, our hope with this is to uh, purchase uh, automated passenger counters, which will help us ensure that our ridership is accurate and also help us make um, planning and budgetary uh, decisions uh, much easier, but also give us real uh, data. Uh, right now we can get the same data, but it takes a, a lot of ciphering and sometimes some assumptions um, and this uh, software would remove those. Uh, also would include some updated dispatching software and uh, dynamic fare payment solutions too. Uh, we are hoping that the link is gonna join us with this application, but it is still unknown as if they are going to do that. But if that's the case, then additional funds will be needed. So right now the ask for this project is um, $150,000. And mm -hmm. if the, like, uh, the link joins, it'll be 100,000. Or an additional 100,000, excuse me. Okay, and then the third project is a project that we're working on with McHead. Uh, McHead will actually be the ones that apply for the funds, but it's a Gorge Regional Transit Network Inclusive Outreach and Education Project. So it's additional outreach and education to increase ridership. Um, however, it's gonna be focused more on the regional level, whereas um, our uh, project of outreach project is more on the local level. So that's kind of the differences between those. But yeah, the goal is to increase ridership, especially among transportation and disadvantaged residents. Are there any questions on that? 
Okay. Uh, so this is the poverty rate threshold. I'm not going to discuss this much because we don't have a quorum. Um, so I'm going to move forward unless there's any additional questions on this from uh, Kevin or Taylor. You discussed it last time. Okay. Amy, I guess just, just one uh, question at the bottom of the memo. It, staff does not have a specific recommendation. And if you if you do, if you've given this any more thought, if um, you know what during our next next discussion or when we have a quorum, I'd be curious to to know if you've got a, a threshold that you think would be appropriate. Yes, I I do have an updated recommendation. Okay. Um, yeah. My updated recommendation is we put it to fifteen percent. Um, and do you think it'd be helpful for me to send out an updated memo? Well, I, I personally I think um, I, I value uh, the staff uh, knowledge of the system and what we're trying to achieve. This is what you do day in and day out, and so if you've got a a strong recommendation. I would love to see it uh, and, and be able to support you with it. Yep, that'd be great. Yeah. Yeah, after I was looking at the information and I did some analysis using ODOT's tool, the, the memo that you all received, that is not updated information. Um, that has, uh, that's from, the American Community Survey in 2017. Um, so I found some updated information that ODOT through a, a platform called Remix that ODOT um, encourages us to use. And based on that information, I, I think we should use 15% or more of the population that is within 200% of the poverty threshold. But um, I will do my best to, to update that memo. Actually, I will, because I think that the next meeting that we're gonna have um, I think what we'll do is we'll just put everything into the December 9th meeting. Um, and uh, I think that we're also gonna ask the board to appoint another SDIF advisory committee member. So that'll help make meeting quorum a, a little easier. Um, Cause right now we, we have six advisory committee members and we need four people to get majority. And if we have seven community members, we still need four people for majority. It just adds one additional person. Um, so, but I also in general, this, this person that uh, if everything works out, I think they would be a great addition as they um, would be a, another uh, representative low income, but uh, also community workers as well. So I think it would be a good addition. Uh, but yes, I will send out, I will create an updated uh, memo that has that information, Kevin, uh, so you guys have that for the December 9th meeting. Sorry to keep pestering you on this memo. Thank you, Amy. No, it's, um, you should. And I'm sorry, I think I'm remembering after we're talking about this that I said I would update it for this meeting, and I'm sorry I did not meet that, um, that promise. Uh, last week ended up being a lot busier of a week than it, it was supposed to be. So I do apologize for that, Kevin. And not, I, not necessary. Thank you, Amy. <laughs> All right. Understood. Yeah. Grant applications, man, they can take up a lot of time when you don't expect it. <laughs> um, okay. Cool. And then so the, the next thing they wanted to go over is the formula funds available for the 23-25 biennium. So again, for people who maybe aren't familiar with bienniums and what time frame that means, that means July 1st, 2023 to June 30th, 2025. Um, and so our projected estimates for the SDA formula, so this is received through payroll tax. Um, and so it's, there's a lot of estimation and projection happening. Um, but at 100%, we're supposed to get about $651,000 for fiscal year 24, which again is um, July 23 
through June, June 24. And then uh, fiscal year 25 uh, would be 680,000-ish at the 100% level. The recommendation that I've received from ODOT is to actually plan for about 120%. Uh, and I'm bumping it up a little bit more um, just in case, because what we can, if we plan for a certain amount, even if we don't get that, um, it doesn't hurt us. But if we plan for less and then there ends up being more money available, we actually miss out on the what is in our plan. And uh, so let's say in our plan, it's 100,000, but we the amount available is actually 120,000. We miss out on that 20,000 because it's not in our plan. So I'm shooting way over the moon here, just in case to make sure we don't miss out on any funds. Um, so, and before I show you kind of what I was thinking for our, um, our different projects, our different buckets, and Lexi, I know that you might have to leave at 445. So if so, uh, thank you for joining and please feel free to do that and I'll, uh, make sure you have all the information. Um, I wanted to review really quickly our coordinated transportation plan, uh, the priorities that were identified there two years ago, um, as they're still very relevant today. So a, a lot of it had to do with ensuring people felt safe using public transit. Again, just a reminder, 2020 was the year of, well, the start of COVID, and um, we really had to, to make sure people feel comfortable with the system. Um, and make sure also people are aware of schedules and routing and how transit is used and um, partner with uh, local organizations that meet these individuals on a daily basis where they are and ensuring that those resources are available to folks. Um, and then, of course, we want to sustain existing transportation services, uh, expand operating hours into weekend, evenings and weekends, which we did, uh, expand transit to meet the needs of seniors. Uh, we started the Portland Medical Shuttle, uh, which allows folks to go from Hood River County to Portland uh, for medical appointments. Um, and uh, transit access to, to folks in Cascade Locks. Um, and so th those were the objectives on that piece. And then for, for capital, ensure vehicle fleet has, um, has adequate safety and maintenance, uh, permanent shelters, seats, and signs at each bus stop, uh, increase st stop accessibility for individuals with different levels of mobility, improve dispatching technology, improve sustainability of the cat fleet, SWAM facility and capacity. And then for uh, coordination, working with uh, transportation providers uh, and expanding our partnerships, uh, creating a universal fare system, uh, partner with other employers, tourism organizations and businesses, uh, and uh, access to other transportation services for vulnerable populations, improved multimodal options within Hub River County, and coordination of local and regional planning processes. Um, so when the advisory committee is deciding on recommending projects, there are a number of things that the, um, they should keep in mind, and we want to make sure that uh, <coughs> oh, I had a document and I don't see what I did with it. Um, that we are following specific uh, criteria that ODOT suggests. Uh, so for you know, so frequency expansion, reduction of fares, procurement of buses, improved service connections, increased coordination, student services, maintaining services, so everything listed here. And I will send out the full list for the next meeting. Um, and there's also a number of goals that I'm also gonna send out for the next meeting. There's 10 goals 
uh, specifically that we should be meeting. They don't, all of the projects don't have to meet all 10 goals, but we should be uh, at least one. And the more, the better. So for the 23-25 biennium, here is my first stab at allocations. And again, this is based on the 150,000 level, uh, or sorry, 150% level of the um, projected piece. Any initial thoughts when looking at this? Uh, you'll notice that a lot of these projects are very similar to what we already have. I did add um, Vanpool and mobility services, which mobility services can mean a number of different things. That could be bike share, um, that could be um, uh, taxis uh, doing dial rides, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and I added program reserve again because we're seeing all these additional costs and that funds can be used for any of our, our different projects. Uh, and the ones in red, those are the rollover funds. So, sorry, now I'll ask any initial thoughts. Um, Amy, quick one, maybe it's a quick one. Um, you mentioned that there wasn't really a consequence to um, budgeting for a greater amount of stiff funding. What if there's a lesser? What if uh, payroll taxes go down, maybe uh, due to economic recession or layoffs, um, et cetera? Could there be consequences if we're budgeting and then not having uh, funds come in to support services that we're budgeting for? Yeah, so it's a good question. And I mean, first of all, so this is just the initial step, right? Um, this isn't necessarily, I mean, we'll keep these in mind for when we actually go through our budget process. Um, but it is up to our responsibility to keep an eye on the actual um, uh, amount that we receive each quarter um, to ensure that we're, we're not overspending um, and we're putting the appropriate level of service. Um, my understanding, and Valerie, you can correct me if I'm wrong, we will definitely receive that 100% allocation, correct? I, I don't want to say anything is definite, um, but that, because these allocations are estimates and so we don't really know what it is based on the um, both of the specifically with the payroll taxes, um, they can vary a bit until um, I'm not quite sure about the exact timing of when we know for sure when that's going to come in, um, but I think it might be later in the spring, um, but you should be getting more we're expecting it to be more so the hundred percent should be um kind of that should be there but i don't want to say it definitively is that right. clear enough or vague enough <laughs> i i think ultimately and the odot projectors and that's probably not their official title. Economists, but yeah. <laughs> economists, yes. Um, that sounds more likely. Um, they are pretty conservative in their numbers. Yeah, they are. And so I think it's fairly safe. I mean, there's never definites in this world, right? Um, but I think it's fairly safe to say that we'll get the at least the 100%. Um, and then it's just up for us to do our due diligence to really be tracking where we are and make sure we're spending appropriately and don't get us get ourselves into a an issue. Does that help at all, Kevin? Yes, thank you. Um, I, I how about uh, one more? So we've got the stiff advisory committee that's helping with this analysis. Is the CAT board also assisting with this analysis? Are they kind of double checking our recommendations? Yes. So um, Letty, who is actually part of this too, she just wasn't able to join until five o'clock today. Um, Letty, one of our board members, she is part of this, uh, but also all of this information will go to the board and they have the ability to either move forward with your recommendations or um, have changes before they approve the SIP plan. 
uh, before it goes to uh, ODOT. And so what we have to do is, um, so after this, I'll, I'll take in your recommendations and I'll create a more formalized stiff plan. Um, and then we'll present that on December 9th, uh, along with we'll discuss the, um, uh, the poverty threshold, as well as the, the applications for stiff discretionary and statewide transit network. Um, and uh, we'll discuss those all at December 9th. And then those will all go to the board at the December board meeting, which I think is a week after that. Um, and they will either confirm or reject or uh, suggest changes. Thanks, Amy. And we have some pretty fiscally conservative um, uh, board members. Uh, so I think several of them are gonna very much um, approve of the program reserve funds. Um, and the fact that the, the maintain existing services, I buffered that quite a bit, um, actually quite a lot uh, to ensure that even with the rising costs that we see, uh, we'll be able to maintain existing levels. The other thing to note uh, for the targeted service to vulnerable populations, um, I will include this a little bit more in the notes for the next meeting, um, but those will be also not only to figure out how to to solve the cascade locks uh, access issues because our the cascade lock service that we have right now, the deviated service does not have the ideal ridership. So we're trying to really figure out how to solve the access issues that those individuals are seeing while still using funds appropriately. Um, and that the answer to that could be a number of different things. And um, uh, so that's something we're still figuring out. So the targeted service to vulnerable populations includes cascade locks. It also includes um, potentially uh, some funds for uh, other more west side uh, services uh, or yeah. And then that's dependent on a lot of different things. And that is in the, the coordinated, transportation, coordinated transportation plan, but of course expanded on um, in the um, upcoming transit master plan. Um, but again, this has to go based off of our current transit master plan, the 2017 version, or the coordinated transportation plan that we did in 2020. I'm sorry, that might've been a little too much information. Any questions on that? Valerie, anything you would like to add or? Um, no, nothing for me. This it looks, I mean, yeah, it seems like you're chugging along appropriately. Thanks. Amy, I got one more for you. Okay, for uh, Project 2, Targeted Service, Vulnerable Populations, it mentions two in lieu sites. Um, can you yeah. confirm where, uh, where service is being provided? Yeah, so it's the Wyeth and Lou site as well as the Cascade Locks and Lou site. So the Wyeth and Lou site, um, and for, you know where it is, but for those other folks, um, it's near the Wyeth State Park. Um, and then we also have the Cascade Locks and Lou site, which is kind of behind the old Thunder Island Brewing um, building in Cascade Locks. Uh, so a large amount of our service to Cascade Locks can also target those folks. We are still trying to figure out the right equation for the folks at the Wyeth and Lou site. I, I will say that's something that's an ongoing conversation. And another one of our advisory committee members, Rochelle, she's actually part of the Native American uh, community and works with Critfic. So she is very um, intelligent on those uh, matters that are affecting, impacting those individuals that live there year-round. It's also a hard kind of situation because there's only a couple that do live there year-round, and um, 
because of where they the they also have bad cell connections. So there's a lot of different factors of how we're trying to figure out the best way to, to serve those individuals who live there. Thanks, Amy. Yeah. And that's also the intent with this second or the number two project here too. So that would be the same population. So not only the Cascade Locks, but also trying to figure out um, some uh, the transit access to Spanish speaking populations up in the upper valley um, and uh, making sure there our services are really working for them as well. And then the outreach and awareness of services for this year, the, the main intent is still to, to reach the vulnerable populations, um, but also just in general to, to broaden the awareness of services uh, and ensure we're, we're doing the appropriate outreach to, um, to community members. Which include um, methods that aren't electronic, right? We've got a variety of method, methods to reach folks in the community that don't have digital technology or internet access, et cetera. Correct. So that's working with our um, travel trainer uh, and mobility manager, Sarah. So she does outreach within the community. Uh, partial of these um, funds will uh, pay for match funds for 5311 or 5310 mobility management, which we will use to help pay for her salary. Um, and she's the one that she goes out to these different events. She works directly with One Community Health, um, the next door, Hood River Health Department, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and she also works on the Gorge Transit Connect program too. Um, and then also our brochures, uh, ensuring that everything is translated into Spanish. And when we have any updates that they're in Spanish and any posters, et cetera, that we uh, distribute are in Spanish as well. Um, and uh, then just in general, doing outreach um, and targeted outreach. Uh, at appropriate venues. Um, Rebecca, so who is also Spanish speaking, she has been learning the ropes and been going to um, like the uh, Westside Elementary. Uh, you also went up to Odell too, right? Yes. Yep. Yes. And we, uh, the intent is to expand on that. And uh, I have, feel like we did a lot of, like a lot of, um, I don't know that word. Yeah where we, reach, we reached out to a lot of people, especially the um, Spanish uh, community. So yeah. I feel like we did a lot of that. Yeah, our yeah. goal is to continue to, to just expanding the amount of events that we go to that are Spanish speaking um, the, and just expanding our awareness in the community, doing more, uh, radio shows on uh, Radio La Tierra uh, and uh, working uh, just more with our partners. And, and as we do more, we've been involved in more uh, events. Nice work, Rebecca, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, she's diving in. We're very excited <laughs> to have her on board. She's a a newer member of the team, but she is, she goes out to those events and she is incredibly personable and she becomes friends with everybody. So it's wonderful. <laughs> Great. Um, so next steps is just the reviewing the draft SCI plan and again, doing the things that we can do here today and um, provide a recommendation to the board. And we'll be doing that at the December 9th meeting. Uh, yeah. Any additional questions? Is that December 9th meeting also going to be in the evening? Do we have a time for that? Yes, the original date or time was, I believe this was a 4.30. Let me confirm that. 
um, and make sure everybody can. It's Friday. Yep, it's a Friday. So that makes me a little nervous. Um, so we can also adjust this date. Um, this was just originally decided based on a doodle poll. And I can send out a noodle, new doodle, new doodle poll. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's a 4.30 meeting on a Friday. So based on our last experience, might suggest that we change that. Um, <laughs> a brave time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I probably did it a little bit against my better judgment. But um, yes. So is there consensus in this group, at least, that um, I put it out to the group of maybe moving that to a different time and a different day? I think it would be worth uh, investigating alternatives. Yeah. OK. Um, are you guys available December 6th? So that's a, so the options I can do is I can send out Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday of that week um, at 4 p.m. And we can make those. I can actually do that Wednesday, too. From 4 to 5. Uh, Amy, I can make any of those work uh, 6th, 8th, and 9th at 4, but um, if, if late in the day is part of our problem, if we need to look at earlier in the day to get to get a quorum, I'm happy to work with you on alternatives. Okay, yeah, the only problem, I'm trying to include a high school student, which is why I've been looking at the, the later in the day ones. Um, Yeah, most of those work for me. I'm just not available that Thursday the 8th, but the okay. Tuesday or Wednesday or Friday would be fine. Okay. What? It, okay, so the 6th or the 7th. And same here, Amy. I can make any of those. The Friday is a little challenging because I'll be en route to Portland, but um, I could potentially join by phone too. Okay, wonderful. Thank you very much, Lexi. All right, with that, I think we'll go ahead and close the meeting tonight. Again, thank you to your, you three for, for showing up. And Lexi, I do really appreciate it. I know you moved a couple things around to be here tonight. So I really appreciate it as well. And I will see you guys soon. Thank you. I was just going to say this was really informative and helpful. So I'm glad I could make it. Thank you. And I'm glad. Yeah, thank you so much. See you next time. Right. Valerie, if you can <laughs> hold on the line, that'd be wonderful. Sure thing. Thank you. Bye-bye. Right. Thank you.